In this video, we'll learn how to find all of the asymptotes of a rational function. Let's start by talking about vertical asymptotes. A key idea is that a rational function might have vertical asymptotes, but it can only have them at values of x where the denominator equals zero. But unfortunately, just knowing that the denominator equals zero is not a guarantee that you'll actually get a vertical asymptote. So to find the vertical asymptotes, what we need to do is factor the top and bottom of that rational function, and we need to divide out any common terms. And once we do that, then we'll be guaranteed that any remaining values of x that make the denominator equal to zero will have vertical asymptotes there. But anything that divided out, we won't necessarily have vertical asymptotes there. Let's see how this works with an example. So in this case, we've got f of x equals x squared plus 6x minus 27, all over x squared minus 9. So the places where we might have vertical asymptotes are places where this denominator equals 0. So we want to set the denominator equal to 0 and solve. That's not a difficult equation to solve, and that gives us our, our solutions x equals plus or minus 3. So those are the places where we might have asymptotes, but do we actually have asymptotes there? Well, one way to answer this question is to make a table of values. Let's start with our first potential asymptote, x equals negative 3. We want to plug in several values that are getting closer and closer and closer to negative 3, and we want to plug in those values on both sides. So these are x values that are a little bit greater than negative 3, but getting closer and closer to negative 3, and we're seeing that our y values are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. These are values of x that are also getting closer and closer to negative 3, but a little bit less than negative 3, and what we're finding is that our y values are going towards negative infinity. Now let's check our other potential asymptote, which remember was x equals positive 3. Again, we're making a table of values. These are numbers that are getting closer and closer to positive 3, but a little bit less than positive 3. And these are numbers that are getting closer and closer to 3, but a little bit greater than 3. But we're not quite seeing the same behavior here. Whereas when we approached negative 3, our y values were blowing up, either going towards positive infinity or towards negative infinity. Here, our y values are actually getting closer and closer and closer to y equals 2. So in this table, as we go down the table, x is getting closer to negative 3, and f of x gets big. But in this table, as we go down, x is getting closer to positive 3, and what's happening to our f of x values? They're actually getting closer to 2. So why is this happening? Well, let's remember what we said before about the fraction needing to be in lowest terms. So let's factor the top and factor the bottom. When we do that, on the bottom, we have a difference of two squares. So we have x minus 3 times x plus 3. And on the top, the top factors as x minus 3 times x plus 9. And so we can see that we have a factor of x minus 3 on both the top and the bottom. And if we divide those out, then what we get is x plus 9 divided by x plus 3, as long as x is not equal to 3. I have to make that distinction here, because these two fractions are not exactly the same. So those two fractions are not exactly equal. They're mostly equal but they're not exactly equal. And the difference is at x equals 3. Because the fraction on the right-hand side of that equation, I can plug x equals 3 into this equation. I can plug x equals 3 into this fraction, and I get an answer. I get a number. But if I try to plug x equals 3 into this fraction, I'd be dividing by 0, because there's a factor of x minus 3 on the bottom. So the difference between these two functions is very slight, and it's only at x equals 3. But that makes all the difference, and that's why we don't have an asymptote at x equals 3. In fact, what we have is a hole. So the graph of this function, so the graph of y equals f of x, will have a hole at x equals 3, not an asymptote. And what will the y-coordinate of that hole be? Well, we can tell from the table that we made that the hole is going to be at y equals 2. But we can tell that in a different way now. Because if we plug 3 into this new fraction, the one that we can plug 3 into, we get 3 plus 9 divided by 3 plus 3. That's 12 over 6 
and that's 2. So that's why those numbers were getting closer and closer to 2. Because all those numbers in that table that I was plugging in, the 2.9 and the 3.01 and all that stuff, all of those were numbers that I could plug into both of these fractions. And so, of course, they were the same. But it was x equals 3 that I couldn't plug into my original fraction. But now that I can plug it into this fraction, I can see that my values were actually getting closer to 2. Okay, so now that we've identified the vertical asymptotes of our function, let's start talking about horizontal asymptotes. It turns out that horizontal asymptotes of a rational function is all to do with the degree of the top and the degree of the bottom. Remember that in a rational function, the top and the bottom are both polynomials, and the degree of a polynomial is the highest power of x that appears in that polynomial. So if it happens that the degree of the top is greater than the degree of the bottom, then there are no horizontal asymptotes. But if the degree of the top is less than the degree of the bottom, then we do get a horizontal asymptote, and it's at y equals 0. The idea is that the bottom is so much bigger than the top that as x gets big, that bottom is going to dominate and everything's going to go to 0. But if the degrees are the same, then the top and the bottom kind of balance, and what you do is you get a horizontal asymptote at y equals a divided by b, where a and b are the leading coefficients of the top and the bottom. So whatever the coefficient of that highest power of x term is on the top and the bottom, you take the one on the top, divide it by the one on the bottom, and that gives you a horizontal asymptote. So for example, let's go back to the function we were talking about before. Does this function have a horizontal asymptote? Well, that question has to do with the degree of the top and the degree of the bottom, which in this case are both 2. And since those degrees are the same, now we need to identify the leading coefficient of the top, which is 1, and the leading coefficient of the bottom, which is also 1. And so the horizontal asymptote is at y equals the quotient of those two numbers. So the horizontal asymptote is going to be at y equals 1 divided by 1, which is just y equals 1. Okay, now let's put all of this information together, together with a little bit more information that we can get pretty quickly, and graph this function. So what we found was that this function has a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3. But that it doesn't have a vertical asymptote at x equals positive 3. And instead what it has as a whole at coordinates 3, 2. So we indicate that by drawing an open circle there at 3, 2. We also found out that we have a vertical asymptote at y equals 1. Also from the chart of numbers that we got, we know that as x approaches negative 3 from below, my y values are going to minus infinity. And as x approaches negative 3 from above, my y values are going to positive infinity. So if I connect all these pieces together, I can also figure out the y-intercept by plugging in 0. That's an easy thing to do, so let's just go ahead and do it. When I plug in x equals 0, the only thing that's left over on the top is negative 27. I get negative 9 on the bottom. Negative 27 divided by negative 9 is positive 3. So the y-intercept of this function is 0, 3. So I can kind of connect the dots here in the quadrant 1. My graph is a little rough here, but you get the idea. So there's my quadrant 1. And then a quadrant 4, in the, as when x is negative, I get my curve approaching this asymptote as well in this direction. So that's a really rough sketch of my graph, but again, it's got all of the important information. It's got the y-intercept, it's got the hole that I've got at 3, 2, it's got my asymptotes, so I've got pretty much everything I would need to know to understand what this function does.